So welcome back guys to another video and today I thought to sort of wrap up the rare weapon series that I've been doing on the channel, why not do a top 10 overall best weapons that you can find in Fallout 4. I think it's fair to say that I've covered a ton of rare weapons on the channel, whether this be uh, legendary weapons that you can obtain or unique weapons that you can obtain from vendors. I've covered a lot, I've done a lot of different types of top 5s, but I've never really done a top 10 based around the overall best weapons. I think the closest I got to this uh, was a top 5 overpowered weapons I did like months ago, and a lot of things have changed since then, a lot of things have been updated, and I thought why not do this video for you guys today. So. As always, if you guys do enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like. Let's see if we can smash 5,000 likes on this video. Uh, that would be awesome. And let's jump straight into this. So with a lot of the weapons in this video, you are going to need to farm them from legendary enemies. And if you guys do want to know how farming works and the best ways to do it, I'll have a link to a tutorial in the description below. But let's start this off easy, no farming needed, a very easy one to pick up, and this is a melee weapon known as the Throat Slicer. Now the Throat Slicer has been dubbed one of the best melee weapons in the game. However, I do have a weapon that one-ups this a little bit, which I'll talk about here shortly. But the Throat Slicer really is one of the most powerful melee weapons. I mean, it has a very, very high damage output for the type of weapon it is. It can swing very fast because it is a Disciple's Blade. It weighs barely anything because it's a very light weapon. It also does at 25 points of bleed damage per hit. That is the legendary prefix of the weapon itself. And finally, it can be used quite a lot in VATS, oftentimes being able to take out four rooms of enemies with just one swing of the weapon itself. Now let's talk about where all of this damage comes from. I mean you can see here from the gameplay in the background the base damage of the weapon is like 480 plus which is extremely good on a fast sort of melee weapon like this uh, because of course it can swing very fast. But again talking about the perks here so to maximize the damage output for the weapon you're going to want to invest in quite a few of these perks. You know the first thing that I've got going on here uh, is 10 strength. We have all of the ranks of big leagues which allows you to do double damage with melee weapons and also a chance to cripple your opponent. We also have all of the ranks of bloody mess as well which allows you to inflict 15% additional damage uh, while in combat. The pack alpha perk on top of this as well from the recent Nuka World DLC allows you to do 25% more damage and take 30% less damage which of course stacks on top of everything so far. Uh, which by the way if you want to know how to get the pack alpha perk I will leave a link in the description down below but essentially just sort of play along with the pack through Nuka World and you'll eventually get it. Um, again on top of all of this we have the scav magazine issue 2 which allows you to do an additional 25% combat knife and switchblade damage which does actually affect the throat slicer and for the location of the scav magazine you can find it at the Nuka World junkyard. Uh, simply go into the main building up the stairs on the desk is exactly where you'll find it. But additionally to this again, if you invest in the Lone Wanderer perk, you'll also be able to take 30% less damage and also do 25% more damage whilst actually having 25 more action points uh, if you do decide to go out without a companion and also invest fully into that perk. And then the last main one in terms of damage output, we have Rooted. So essentially when you're standing still, uh, you'll gain 50% more damage and 50% damage resistance. So that right there is a lot of damage output perks. I mean, having all of those will really increase the damage of your weapon and turn it into a one to two shot blade that can take out any enemies. Now, of course, alongside these perks, to maximize it even more, you're going to want to invest in the Blitz perk uh, as well as the Ninja perk because, of course, that's sort of the best thing to go for uh, when using melee weapons. Of, of course, with Blitz, it allows you to sort of teleport next to the enemies. Rooted will also take into effect when you're in VATS as well, and uh, it pretty much allows you to take out a whole room of enemies with all of this combined. I mean, it genuinely is a crazy weapon, guys. Like, believe me, you are going to want to pick this weapon up if you do play a melee character build. And to find it, all you need to do is head to the Nuka Town Market. It will actually be sold by Caitlyn inside of there for around 3,000 to 4,000 caps. So, it is kind of crazy how they've added this in as such an easy weapon to obtain for such a cheap price. Because while, again, it is one of the best melee weapons out there for you melee characters. However... The next weapon one-ups it in my opinion, and this is the Instigating Disciples Blade. 
Essentially the same thing as the Throat Slicer, however it has the Instigating Legendary Prefix instead of the 25 points of bleed damage. And what Instigating does is that when the enemy's health is at full, you can literally do double damage with the weapon. So double damage on this weapon paired up with the Blitz and Ninja combination with all of these perks that increase the damage, you are going to one shot any enemy in the game. I mean it doesn't matter what it is, it could be a freaking Mylurk Queen with double health and you'll probably still kill it in one hit. And again, the good thing about it is it has a lot of VATS usage. So if you are in a room full of people and you're sneaking, you can actually take out like every enemy in that room with one usage in VATS just with one swing. And I mean, if you don't end up taking out the enemies in one swing because of how fast the weapon can be used, you end up killing them in 2 to 3 at max anyway, making this truly a devastating weapon. Now to obtain this, there's actually several ways that you can do this. Number one is it will get given to you by Nisha at the very end of the game. After you've completed the quest power play, as long as you haven't killed off the disciples, uh, when you return to Nisha in the disciples hangout, you will basically get given the weapon to you. Now if you don't want to go this route with the ending, because I don't want to spoil too much of the ending, but it's pretty much like you have to make a decent choice in the game, um, the other way you can get it is through farming legendary enemies. Which of course is a lot harder to do for this weapon because while well, it's primarily based on luck. And even so, I haven't really found like a proper Nuka World farming location uh, within the Nuka World area. But you know, you can find the weapon outside of Nuka World, it's just a matter of, you know, farming certain enemies hoping that you'll get the weapon, being quite lucky, and how much time you actually put in to farming for this. And that leads us into our next weapon of the video, which is the Auto Pipe Rifle with the Knee Kappa Legendary Effect. Now I wonder what you guys are thinking, how is an Auto Pipe Rifle good? Well if you haven't heard about this on my channel because I have talked about it before, this weapon isn't about the damage, this is about the legendary effect it has, which is Knee Kappa, which gives you a 20% chance to cripple the target. Now the reason this is good on the auto pipe rifle is because, I mean, number one, the pipe rifle is a lot more frequently seen uh, when legendary farming, so it's a little bit easier to obtain. It has a very fast fire rate, which is what you need on a kneecapper weapon, just it's completely based on fire rate, and the ammo is very easy to obtain as well. So overall, the pipe rifle, in my opinion, is just the perfect weapon to get this on. Now just to put this into perspective, I mean, you can have a whole horde of like 10 to 20 death claws coming at you, you put a couple of bullets of this weapon into each of them, they are going to be on the floor crawling, unable to do anything. And you can do this against any enemy in the game. Anything can be crippled and anything will be crippled in a matter of seconds when using this, making this truly one of the best weapons you can find in the game. I mean, literally, if you carry this thing around with you, it's almost like putting the game in easy mode, even if you're in survival or very hard difficulty. As always, with weapons like this, I mean, it's just based on legendary farming. So simply check the links in the description and hopefully you can get a weapon like this if you are lucky enough. And that leads us into our next weapon which well is the explosive shotgun. Probably the most powerful weapon in terms of raw damage in the game period. I mean the explosive legendary effect is known to be the best legendary effect in the game just because of how powerful uh, this thing can be with the demolition expert rank fully maxed out and on a combat shotgun each pellet does 15 points of explosive damage making this one of the most devastating weapon in the game to any enemy in the game. I mean, explosive damage itself is great. It has the area of effect, which means that you can sort of shoot the ground and take out and hit a bunch of enemies at the same time. But just the sheer damage output that this thing has is crazy. And if you manage to get your hands on one, you are one lucky guy. One of the better locations to farm for a shotgun is inside of the Gunner's Plaza. That's typically where I've seen a lot of enemies dropping legendary variants uh, of the shotgun. And while we're on the subject of explosive weapons, another great weapon, in fact another two good explosive weapons, is number one, the explosive handmade rifle, as well as the explosive minigun. But let's talk about the handmade rifle for a second. The handmade rifle itself, of course, was introduced with the Nuka World DLC. The weapon itself has a high damage output, it has a very very fast fire rate which in my opinion is also very controllable as well and it can also be turned into a sniper rifle variant. 
The one bad thing that I will say about this is the fact that it does use 7.62 rounds, which can be a little bit hard to come across. I mean, because of how fast this weapon shoots, um, it literally eats up ammo so quickly. And you can buy ammo in bulks of like 900 from uh, the Nuka Town market, but again, because of how fast it does shoot, um, of course, it, it does eat the ammo very quickly there. However, I mean, you can sort of you know, switch it if you want into a different, you know, shooting variant so you don't waste ammo as quick. And uh, with the explosive legendary effect on it, it just makes it even better. But the problem with this weapon is it's extremely, extremely rare. Again, I haven't really found any major Nuka World farming locations yet. And only a handful of people have managed to get their hands on this. I saw a few people talking about it on, uh, you know, forums and stuff like that. And pretty much like most explosive weapons in the game, it will just wipe enemies off the floor. No matter the difficulty you are on, no matter the enemy you come across, it will die in seconds when using a weapon like this. And that's actually a good segue into another weapon that I was going to talk about on this list, which is the Splatter Cannon. The Splatter Cannon, of course, being a unique variant of the Handmade Rifle, and you guys already know how powerful the Splatter Cannon is. I mean, the legendary prefix on the weapon is that, you know, you do more damage on each consecutive hit. And because of how fast the fire rate of the splatter cannon or against the handmade rifle is, that legendary effect is absolutely devastating. So with the explosive variant, I mean, you can just imagine how much more damaging that is actually going to be. Of course, for the splatter cannon itself, it can be purchased from Aaron inside of the Nuka Town market. It's, it costs quite a bit, but uh, it's just generally one of the best unique weapons that's easy to obtain, which is why I would say go for the splatter cannon first uh, before trying to get an explosive handmade rifle. Uh, whereas the explosive handmade rifle itself has to be farmed and you have to be extremely lucky to get your hands on it. And of course that leads again into the weapon I said I was going to talk about which is the explosive minigun. Now the explosive minigun and the explosive shotgun are sort of on two ends of the stick. Some people say uh, the explosive minigun is better whereas some people say the explosive shotgun is better. I guess it's down to personal preference but an explosive minigun, you guys get the idea here, explosive plus a minigun means absolute death for any enemy. The good thing about the minigun is the ammo is very very easy to obtain, it does spray very very quickly, but I still prefer the explosive shotgun, I don't know what it is about it, it definitely does a little bit more damage in my opinion, and I just generally the explosive shotgun is a lot more fun to use rather than carrying around this big huge heavy minigun. So again it's down to personal preference, but the explosive minigun had to be added to the list as one of the best weapons in Fallout 4. And for the next weapon, we have another melee weapon this time, uh, which oftentimes is compared to the Throat Slicer now, which of course is the Furious Ripper. Now the Furious Ripper basically has the legendary modifier where it increases damage after each consecutive hit on the same target. And because this is on the Ripper, which of course deals consecutive damage because of how fast the blades are running, it pretty much is a perfect match. Again, any enemy in the game, you just walk up to it, you start slicing it with the Ripper, it will start off a little bit slow, but after a few seconds of getting that increased damage after each hit, it will be down in seconds. A lot of people do compare this to the Throat Slicer, some people say they prefer the Furious Ripper. Personally, I would still say the Throat Slicer and the Instigating Disciples Blade uh, definitely is a better weapon, but the Furious Ripper is no joke. This is genuinely one of the most powerful melee weapons in the game if you are lucky enough to obtain it. Again, one of the better locations for farming this weapon is the Krupp Manor Basement. There'll always be a legendary ghoul down there that you can take out and loot lock as well. Again, I've said this loads of times in the video, but, you know, farming techniques will be in the description if you guys want to know the best ways to farm for weapons like this. And that leads us into our next weapon, which is the Two-Shot Gorse Rifle. A weapon that I literally carried around for a long, long time. As many of you will know, the two-shot legendary prefix is one of the best ones that you can get in the game because while it pretty much gives you double damage on the weapon that you have and pairing that up with the sheer raw damage output that a ghost rifle already has can only make for one hell of a great weapon to use in combat. While it's not as good as some of the weapons that I've showed in the video, it still is one of the best variants of a ghost rifle and it still is one of the best weapons in the game. I mean, this thing will rail enemies down to the ground in seconds, and for this weapon, farming is definitely better in the abandoned house. The ghouls inside of there tend to drop the gorse rifle a little bit more frequently, and it's definitely worth it, you know, farming in that location uh, rather than some of the others. And for the final weapon of the video, the only gorse rifle variant to actually sort of outbeat the two-shot one 
is the instigating gorse rifle. Now this is primarily down to personal preference. The instigating gorse rifle will give you a flat 200% damage bonus for the very first shot fired at an enemy with full health. However, the two shot gorse rifle will give you 160% damage bonus every single shot that you do. So with the instigating gorse rifle, you will do more damage overall with the first shot that you fire. Whereas with the two shot gorse rifle, you won't do as much damage, but you can still do a lot more damage for every single hit. So it really is down to personal preference. They are both almost the same. Again, instigating and outbeating it there in terms of raw damage for the first shot. And it's always going to be down to personal preference when choosing a weapon like this. As I said before, farming for a gorse rifle is better done in the abandoned house. And that, my friends, is the top 10 weapons that you can find in Fallout 4. That is, of course, if you are lucky enough to get some of these weapons through farming. But as always, hope you guys did enjoy this video. And this is primarily a wrap up of the rare weapon series. I mean, I have a few more ideas planned and stuff like that, but nothing really based around raw damage and how powerful a weapon is. So as always, you know, if you guys did enjoy this video today or did find it helpful, please do me a favor and drop a like on the video, guys. Your support, of course, is always greatly appreciated on the channel. I will also have a mods video going up sometime this week. I'm bringing back the modding series a little bit into the channel. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for an episode of that. Uh, so look out for that sometime this week. Again, hope you will enjoy it. Subscribe if you are new. And I will catch you guys next time with a brand new video. Peace out.